is calling 2018 CR 6683, State of Texas versus Jenna Castillo. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Allie Jackson for the state. Defense? Plea Opus Marshall for Ms. Castillo. And are you Ms. Castillo? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. And so you were sitting on the, were you sitting on the front row, the first row? No, ma'am. Were you on time for court? Yes, yes you were. <laughs> okay. I was actually right. here when okay. I wasn't supposed to. All right. Uh, the defense has filed a motion for early termination. State, had you have a chance to review the defense's motion? Yes, Your Honor. All right. State, are you in objection to the motion? Yes, Your Honor. We do object to it. All right. Defense, do you have any witnesses? Um, we may have uh, Ms. Genevieve Castillo. Um, her father is here in court. Oh, call, uh, if you want to call witnesses, you can choose to call witnesses. Well, Judge, at this particular point, uh, I, I would just move forward with uh, the evidence that I believe that we have per the um, report from the probation officer um, and then just go that route. If, if the court deems it necessary for us to have witnesses, because basically we will say what the witness is like and we'll say, you know, may, maybe. All right. Does your client want to say anything? I, I'm sure at some point she might want to say something, Judge. I'm assuming you would like to hear from her in, in, in situations. Well, I'm here to listen to whatever <laughs> evidence anyone wants to present. Exactly. Exactly. So do you want us to start now? Yes. Well, Thank you so much for granting us this opportunity uh, to come before the court today uh, to uh, hear our motion. Uh, as the court may recall this trial, uh, it was a, you know, yes. um, a very intense trial, a very intense trial. I recall trial. the facts. I, I know you recall the facts. I'm still trapped. I can tell you the entire case. I, I, I know. And Judge, we, we, you and I, you know, we, we've talked, not in terms of this case, but I know sometimes you think I talk a little more than maybe is necessary. No, no, I, <laughs> no, no, I do not. But it's but, okay if people want to be Charles Dickens and get paid by the word. I'm fine I with that. You. I so, so I don't want to do that. Um, no, you but, can. I'm okay. serious. Okay. All right. So as the court recalls, again, this, you know, was a very intense trial. Uh, and I'll just basically, I know you know the facts, but uh, just, you know, to, you know, talk about the facts again on behalf of Ms. Castillo. This was an Playing with guns. Well, Judge, let, let me say it. They they had been together the entire day, not playing with guns, uh, uh, going to the store, doing just different types of things. Her boyfriend um, was playing with the gun. And in fact, uh, a few days earlier, I think he had played with, with the gun. Had nothing to do with Miss Castillo. On the day of this event, uh, the boyfriend had a gun in his hand. Miss Castillo was attempting to leave. Uh, they wanted to go. They were planning on going out. He took the gun and he was playing with a gun that had a beam of light on it. And he was pointing it at her. His cousin comes into the room, says to Miss Castillo, you're going to let him do you like that. Gives, takes a clip out of his gun. His cousin's 18 years old, takes a clip out of his gun, hands it to Miss. The, the evidence is either he hands it to Miss Castillo or he throws it on the bed. There was some contradiction as to what how that happened. But at some point, Ms. Castillo gets the gun, the clip is out of the gun. She thinks the gun was unloaded. Next thing you know, her boyfriend is shot. All right, so let me just say this. The way I remember yes. the trial is that she was coming out of the shower. She was in a towel. The boyfriend had a gun. His mother had bought him as a Christmas present, laser pointers that, pointer, pointers that had the Christmas colors. He pointed his gun at her. He had a green laser on it. His brother tells her, hey, are you going to let him do that to you? And she picks up a gun off the dresser. That's the way I remember the facts. There is nothing about a clip being taken out of the gun. She sees a clip out of the gun. That's the way I remember the trial. Okay, Judge, and I, I respectfully uh, want to correct you with that. And, and, and I'm pretty sure of that. The clip, the argument was that the clip was taken out of the gun, even in closing argument. I argued that as one of the points as to why it is she did not believe that the gun could fire because she did not believe that there were actually bullets in the gun because the clip was out of the gun. I probably spent five to 10 minutes arguing that point alone. So the, the clip was out of the gun, um, which is what 
uh, we presented as the evidence in the case. And even after the trial, when talking to the jury, um, a lot of them understood that they believed that the clip was out of the gun. So that wasn't what the case hinged upon, but we did present evidence at the time that the clip was out of the gun. And the, your honor, you are correct that she was coming out of the shower. She did have a towel on because she was planning on leaving. They were planning on going out, but uh, the boyfriend again was playing with the gun. So this is a totally different gun. I understand that the state uh, tried to put on evidence, or they put on some evidence, I believe, that the gun had been on the dresser at some point because the, and you called him the brother, I think he was the cousin, he was stating that he never brought the gun into the room. But we put on evidence that he did, in fact, bring the gun into the room, talking to the jury after the court, after trial. They believe that too. Now, obviously, the jury found her guilty. We understand that. I did talk with the jury after the, after the trial. The jury placed her on probation, did not sentence her to prison. And the overall thing of it for them was that, obviously, if you have a gun, you probably shouldn't, you shouldn't play with a gun. That's just, I mean, and we all understand that. She's, she understands that here today. Nobody's fighting that particular point that you should not play with a gun. But it's important for us to state that the person who was shot and killed, unfortunately, was pointing a gun at her and had been pointing a gun at her. And it wasn't until the cousin introduced his gun and gave it to her or presented it to her, put it there in front of her and told her, you're going to, are you going to let him do you like that? And she picked up the gun. There's no uh, doubt whatsoever that she intentionally took the gun in her hand. So we're not trying to say that somehow the gun fell into her hand and she had, you know, nothing else to do but to pick it up and, and, and shoot her boyfriend. She was not attempting to shoot him. In fact, after he was shot, she immediately rushed over to help him. Um, she did everything she possibly could do to try to save his life. She was hysterical. When the police arrived, uh, the deceased mother tried to say that Miss Castillo had not in fact shot her son, um, that some robbers came in the house and had shot the son. And Miss Castillo said to the police at that point, no, that's not true, I shot him. And so the police did not have to worry about trying to investigate whether or not robbers came in the house and, and shot the young man, which is the story that the family was presenting to tell the police at that time. She took full responsibility at that particular time for being the one that in fact had shot him. It was not presented as a murder case, it was presented as a manslaughter case uh, because of the reckless nature um, of this particular incident. Uh, after um, the young man was shot, uh, Ms. again, we say that Ms. Castillo was hysterical. If you recall, she was sitting in the yard. She kept calling his name. Uh, she, when she went to the police station, she told the truth. She was forthcoming. She's always been forthcoming. Uh, the jury did, in fact, again, find her, her guilty of the offense. They found her guilty of the offense. But again, I talked with a lot of jurors, uh, which is my normal course after these trials, and uh, many of them believe that um, that this was a very unfortunate incident, that she had no intention of, of shooting him, that uh, it was an accident. Um, however, they felt because there was a gun involved and there was some degree of playing with the gun on her part, that she should have anticipated that something like this should happen. But they also felt it necessary uh, that she be placed on probation. Um, after the trial, um, the court, your honor, uh, in talking with her, uh, I remember or recall you intimating that uh, you would be following this case very closely, making sure that she abided by the terms and conditions uh, of her probation, and that if, in fact, there were any infractions, that that could result um, in her um, going to prison. Um, we told you at that time that we believed that she was a good young lady, that she would do the right thing that we did not believe that there was going to be any issue with regard to that. And you intimated that, you know, well, if not, the possibility always is that she might be early term. Um, of course, the court would not state at that particular point that that would be something that would happen, but it gave her something to strive for. It gave her something for which to have hope. And so she has complied with the terms and conditions of her probation. 
Uh, she is up to date on all monies. She's paid all monies. She's done all courses that uh, have been presented for her to do, uh, including a parenting class. She's done all of her community service hours, 200 hours of community service. Um, she is gainfully employed. She's raising uh, her now two children. She had a son at that particular time. Her son is a straight A student in school, um, well adjusted to school. She has done everything that this court has asked her to do. Um, she is not putting this behind her because uh, she loved the young man that was killed. That was her friend. And uh, this has been devastating to her. And obviously it's always devastating to the family. You can never get around that. And you would not try to get around that. But I believe that Ms. Castillo has presented herself well uh, before this court. Uh, I don't think you've had any trouble out of her. And she's just tried to comply with everything she's supposed to do. I've kept in touch with her over the years uh, and, with her, and with her family over the years to see how she's been doing, uh, you know, having another child, uh, continuing to be employed, uh, keeping up with her probation. I'll ask her, I'll talk with her about it. And uh, she says, yes, Mr. Marshall, yes, Mr. Marshall. So um, I, I just think that she is a worthy candidate. She is a worthy candidate for early termination um, on this case. And I would ask that the court would consider terminating her probation. All right. So the way the court remembers the facts of this case is as I previously, previously stated, and an expert was called to testify and the questions that were being asked of the expert were whether or not dropping a gun, because that was part of the defense. The gun was dropped. The gun went off accidentally and the gun hit at such an angle, a lucky angle that killed the complainant. And then the expert testified, and I believe it was defense expert testified that no, this gun would not uh, go off if dropped accidentally. And there may have been uh, some closing argument about then maybe she didn't know the clip was loaded or not loaded. State? It, well, and after the state, if I may. Sure. For, are you already being heard about the facts, Judge, because you're the one with the facts. No, no, no. Uh, I'll hear your argument. Yes, Judge. At this point, a jury did you know hear all the facts and they heard them as we did judge and they still returned a verdict of guilty and as we know they have the option of assessing as low as two years if they were going to give probation the jury chose after hearing all of the facts and hearing all of the argument the jury chose to give her 10 years um which seems to be deserved for probation your honor um it does seem like this was a probation worthy case but they still chose to assess the maximum amount of probation being 10 years. And we would just ask that the state follow that and that the judge follow that. Because then at the end of the day, a young man lost his life. And as we both know from other, you know, expert testimony, just because there's not a clip doesn't mean that the gun's not loaded and first rule of gun safety. You don't point a gun at somebody unless you intend to fire it. And if I may, Your Honor, that, and that's just not the facts of this particular case. Uh, I believe the fact in this case, which was undisputed, that that um, she had never personally handled a gun before. Um, also, um, with, when talking about whether the, the gun fell to the ground or not, I don't believe our argument was that she dropped the gun. Uh, our argument was that because of the type of gun it was, it was a gun that had been known to have a quick trigger. And so questions were elicited as to whether or not if the gun was dropped so on and so forth, would it fire? And our expert, which we knew what he was already going to say, basically said with respect to that gun, no. But what we were really getting to was the nature of the quick trigger in this particular case, because there was some issue as to whether or not this gun fired with a quick trigger. Um, and, and so when having the gun in her hand, you know, is she intending on firing the weapon, shooting her boyfriend, so on and so forth? No to, to that. But we were, you know, eliciting questions as to whether or not, or answer, answers as to whether or not the gun had a quick trigger. And so our expert witness uh, said uh, he did not believe in his expert opinion that that particular weapon, although that style of weapon did, was known to have had a, trick, a quick trigger, 
He didn't believe that that particular one did because he was not able to test that gun until I believe the day of trial. Uh, yeah, I think the day he, he testified was the, the day that he was able to, uh, to look at that gun on the stand actually is when he was able to do that. So with that having uh, been said, Again, the jury did find uh, Ms. Castillo guilty. Again, I talked with the jurors uh, after the trial. And in fact, I believe we even argued or at least let them know that, um, and I think I even requested at some point that uh, that they give her the 10, uh, 10 years of probation, right? Um, and with the idea that if she complied with probation, that she might be early term. And I've talked with some of the jurors about that mm -hmm. after the trial. And they understood that if she was in compliance, that you know the court had the discretion of early terminating her from probation. So I don't even think that uh, all of the jurors, you know, really thought it necessary that she do all of the ten years. What they thought was really most important was one that she understands the the nature of what had occurred in this particular case and how serious it was. Uh, two that she responds as one, not only with words coming before the court and saying that she's going to do the right thing and be the right kind of person, but that her actions would actually follow. And her actions have. She's done everything the court has asked her to do. She's paid everything. She's done all of her community service hours. She's done all of the classes. She had a very good rapport with her probation officer. I believe the probation officer, the, the one that you know told her to come before the court and ask the court to terminate her early, if, if, if my uh, memory serves me correct. So it's it's just one of those cases where, and I understand, I, I get it. I understand it's, it's a manslaughter case. Somebody lost their life. And you know what? You just got to do the 10 years. Well, well, no, actually, counsel, and I believe afterwards, both you and the state's attorney came before the court after this was all over and asked the court, hey, if we would have came for you on an open plea, do you remember that conversation? And, and, and I believe you said that you might would have given her deferred to No, what I said was that if you all had come to me on an open plea, that I would have given her deferred because these were two young children playing around with guns. That's what happened. Two young children playing around with guns. And I said their parents were allowing them to play house and play around with guns. And I would have given her deferred adjudication. But where we are now is she hasn't even done five years on probation yet. And in the big scheme of things, somebody is dead. I understand that she loved him. I do remember the facts of the case. I remember her being on the sidewalk when the police came and she was telling them that she shot him. And the complainant's mother is saying she doesn't know what she's saying. She's in shock. Robbers came in. I remember that. So I want you to know that I remember all of this. I remember that you were very distraught because the person that you loved died, right? And I know you didn't mean to, to kill him. That's why it's a manslaughter case. And I know that part of the fault, and I don't like to pass blame around, but parents should not have allowed children to be playing with guns. And I remember listening to the testimony and thinking to myself, I didn't know laser pointers now come in Christmas colors, holiday colors. You know, why are people marketing holiday colors for people and especially children? But my problem with this case in granting you early term is you haven't even done five years yet. This is from 2020. You need to at least have done half the time. And I know you can come forward at a third of the time, but at the end of the day, someone's dead. And I'm not trying to make you feel any worse than you already feel. But honestly, they're dead because you picked up a gun. Whether you knew it was loaded or not, you picked it up, you pointed at him and you fired. So you should at least serve half the term before you come to the court asking for early term. You understand? Yes. All right. So at that point, I will strongly consider your motion for early termination. But now, you just been on since 2020. And I know sometimes people rush through uh, conditions that are given to them. And I appreciate that because I want you to do it. 
you appear to be on the right track. You're doing what you need to do. But a third of the time and somebody's dead is not a, enough in this case. You understand? Yes, so come back when there's five years that have elapsed and the court will strongly consider your motion for early termination. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Maybe we'll be excused. Yes. Thank you. Christopher Trevino.